Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Urinary tract infections, or UTIs. What are some of the bacteria involved in it, some predispositions and risk factors, as well as signs and symptoms, and supplementation that you can utilize for UTIs, or especially chronic UTIs. So let's get right into it. Pathogens. Approximately 80% of all UTIs are E. coli infections. E. coli is usually found in the GI tract, and it makes its way into the urethra, which is basically where you pee out of. Other pathogens, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Proteus mirabilis, Enterococcus faecalis, Streptococcus saprophyticus, those are the major causes of UTIs. Now, you can diagnose a UTI by a urinalysis, and then they can do a urine culture to determine what specific bacteria is causing the problem. So for people who have chronic UTIs, you definitely want to do a urinary culture to figure out what is going on there, okay? Increased risk factors for UTIs. Number one is the female anatomy. A lot of UTIs happen with females because they have a shorter urethra, so they have the shorter path to get in and make an infection. Sexual activity can sometimes cause increased use of, uh, increased risk of UTIs. Catheterization, structural, anything that impedes urinary flow in the, in the bladder or the urethra. Weakened immune system, menopause, oftentimes when your estrogen or your hormonal shifts occur, you can actually increase UTIs. So with menopause, it's usually a drop in estrogen that causes the increased risk of UTIs. Hygiene also matters. Spermicides will also increase the risk of UTIs. Diabetes, blood sugar. This is a major one because if you have prediabetes or diabetes, basically the bacteria feed off sugar. So if you're diabetic, you need to manage that or basically or simply just cut out all sugar from your diet. Overuse of antibiotics can also increase the risk of UTIs because these bacteria become more resistant uh, to the antibiotics due to overuse. And also it changes the gut microbiome, which would also impact UTIs in the long run. Okay, so. And now, if you're interested in all this material and detailed notes, we have a free health transformation program available for you to sign up. I'll put the link below where you can get the supplements, dosages, timing, etc. So let's get right into the rest of the video. Symptoms of a urinary tract infection. Frequent urination. This is where you go to the bathroom, turn around 20 minutes later, you gotta go again, and you're not uh, completely emptying or voiding. You have burning sensation upon urination. Your urine color will change. So it's not your typical color and you're going to see that it might be cloudy, dark, or it might smell different to you. You might have blood in the urine. You can have pelvic pain, lower back pain, fatigue. In severe instances, you're going to have fever, nausea, and severe lower back pain. Now, UTIs can also be silent, meaning asymptomatic. You have no symptoms of it. But when you go to your routine blood work and urinalysis, they pick up an infection, okay? Now, when we have all of this going on, you definitely want to do a urinalysis with the culture to make sure you get the right bacteria and the right treatment. Hygiene. Now, I've seen some experts say really hygiene doesn't matter that much in terms of like, let's say wiping from front to back or back to front, but I think hygiene does matter. So let's get right into this. You need to drink enough water to flush your system. So basically, you need to drink at least a minimum, minimum of 50 ounces per day. I prefer probably 75 to maybe 90 to 100 ounces per day to really flush your system. You want to wipe from front to back after a bowel movement. 
Regular bathing is very important to make sure the area is clean, basically. Holding your urine can be problematic in the sense that if you just hold the urine for long periods of that time in your bladder, the bacteria has more time to grow and proliferate in the bladder. Avoid irritants. Sometimes female hygiene products, spermicides can be irritating to the area and be more predisposed for urinary tract infections. You want to wear cotton underwear and avoid synthetics and urinate after intercourse to flush out the urethra, okay? Supplements, cranberry juice, unsweetened, or you can get the capsules, right? Probably the capsules might work a little better because it's concentrated. d probiotics like lactobacillus species, vitamin C, garlic extract, uva ursi, zinc, and bucha, and carvacol. Carvacol is found in oregano oil. If you look at this list, other than this one right here, it creates an environment less conducive for the bacteria to grow. Basically, an antimicrobial, anti-biofilm, so biofilm is something that kind of covers the area and protects the organism. So you want to break away the biofilm. So you want to be antimicrobial, anti-biofilm, and anti-adhesion. What that means is that you don't want the bacteria to stick, so you want um, something that's going to be there to prevent the bacteria from sticking to the urethra and bladder. So this protocol, again, I will have a detailed explanation of each supplement if you join our free trans, uh, Transformation Health Program. I'll put the link down below. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.